Today I'm going to show you guys how to hook up your sink basins to your drains and it's very important that you get this down uh, because health inspectors that inspect the vehicles they're actually going to be looking for uh, P-traps, your air gaps and so forth so I don't really like the type of uh, air gap drains that I have but I'm going to show you what I had to go with and the reason why and, it, and why that's important. So this video is just on hooking up your actual drains and your drainage system down to your gray tank gray water tank so the next video that i do is going to be how to hook up your pump from your fresh water tank uh, to your hot water heater and also to your fountain soda machine and this is very important when it comes to a food truck you're gonna have to you're gonna want to have a a fountain soda machine i don't care where you get it from pepsi subway i used one from here anywhere okay it's very important that you have that and you're going to need the the fresh water to run from your pump all the way over to that so i'm going to show you how to hook that up also in another video when it comes to the fresh water okay so let's go ahead let's get started on the sink basins and your drains to your gray water tank all right so just to give you a quick overview of what i got going on Okay, so this is my fresh water tank. It's a 30 gallon tank and you can see it's a pretty snug fit. And if you've been following these videos and you built your, your food truck or your food trailer the same, there comes a very limited space. But if you got a lot of space to work with, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about doing this. Uh, these right here, they have little air gaps that are inside of these, okay? And you can see, I've only got like a half inch there and I got like an eighth of an inch right there. And that's the reason why I had to go with this, all right? Uh, but it's gonna pass. Because I got that air gap in there. It almost works as a P-trap. Okay, uh, if you're familiar with draining systems, uh, a P-trap. So that's what that is right there. But I'm going to show you how I got to this point. All right, and it doesn't have any leaks. So here we go. We're going to go from here to this one here. And these are not fastened down. Okay, these are loose. The basins are loose, and that's the way you want it for right now. All right, so what's going to be needed? Obviously, these air gap uh, drains, and what happens is that there's a, obviously the hole where the drain is. That goes down, and it almost goes down into this bowl type, so it goes below right about to there, and then the water feeds up and then pushes out here, okay, into your three-quarter inch uh, clear vial. So that just goes on there like so, and then you're going to need some tees, plastic tees. You can see they're ribbed right here, so it really grabs on. And I'm not using any clamps uh, when it comes to this, all right? So, because this really, this pushes on so tight, all right? It just, if, if you end up getting a leak, then throw some clamps on it. But I'm not using any clamps for this, and you're going to need some elbows here. Um, plumber's tape, okay? That's very important. Uh, it's the blue, not the yellow, okay? Wide mouth. Uh, channels and you're going to need utility knife and also something to mark with a pencil and these are your drains right here okay let's take a look at that there and there okay picture of that backside there it pretty much shows everything that you're going to need all right so but what i was saying so what ends up happening that drops down it goes into the bowl feeds out it almost works as a p-trap um you need that air gap, okay? Inspector's gonna look for that when it comes to your vehicle, your food truck, or your food trailer. They look for the air gaps. It's very, because it stops the contamination of the water from one drain going up into the sink or your wash or your rinse or your sanitize, sanitizer. All right, so let's get going. Okay, so when I take everything out of this box, uh, you got your little drain, and that's perfect. Okay, set that off to the side. There's this nut with this uh, vinyl washer that's inside. That is for uh, the schedule 30 or 40 that you would end up using. Normally this is underneath kitchen sinks and I would much rather prefer using uh, schedule 40 or 30, but I don't have the space as you've seen. It's, it's a pretty tight, tight, tight space. So this right here, I'm not even gonna use, okay? So I'm just gonna set that aside. What I am going to use is the nut that goes on to this drain that little piece of paper and that 
rubber gasket. Now I'm not using any uh, plumber's putty because I'm just going to use that that rubber gasket. It's going to go inside, so I'm just going to take this and set that right inside, right there. Okay, and come around here, and then the nut and the paper washer. Gotta hold the drain. That screws on pretty easy, as you can see. And just get that tightened down as much as you can by hand. It's not gonna go much more once I use these clamps, okay? Okay, it really doesn't. Now, I'm not gonna put the plumber's tape on yet. Okay, what you need this end up doing is you that you need that port to face towards the wall with all the other ones because they need to line up with the the T or the elbow that I'll be using because this is the end one. Okay, so I need that to face towards the wall, and you won't know that until you tighten this nut down, and then go ahead and screw that in. I'll make sure. Do not strip that out. So you want to make sure it's nice and free floating. Should not be binding, okay? Okay, so you want that to go all the way up until you hit that nut right there, okay? And then you know that's as high as it's going to go. And you can see this is not the direction I want it to go. I want it to go here. So you can see that nut is turning because it didn't tighten down all the way. So that means it's still gotta be tightened down. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go just a little bit more because once I tighten that nut down, it's gonna go up and that'll give me just a little bit more to push that, that port towards that wall, straight towards that wall. And that's exactly what I want. Okay, I don't want it to shoot that way because I got a T, I mean an elbow I got to put on here to shoot over to here. Okay, so now that I know that's where that's at and I know that nut is spinning, I'm gonna hold it on the inside and I'm gonna take this off. look make sure I do it stripping that out because I felt like it was going on there kind of tight and it's not but that's good okay so now that I got that okay so we know remember that this port was shooting this way so all I'm doing is I'm loosening the nut okay and I'm gonna take my pencil and put a mark here okay and that tells me that's where that port was shooting and I'm going to turn the whole drain not just the nut the drain also okay and make sure that my line is going that way towards the wall and it is pretty snug and it's going the way that I want it to that's pretty good so now I can go ahead and put my plumber's tape on that okay so your plumber's tape here is really cheap all right so do not be afraid to use this stuff okay you don't want to put on so much that it doesn't thread but typically I will go around this you know, like two to four times okay and then it'll just tear right off just like that and you're ready to just thread this on find your thread because that tape is there and it should be nice and snug which it is I feel it and just 
like that. We are all lined up. Okay, you don't want to tighten down with the, the, uh, the channel lock on that because these threads will snap and you'll just wear them right out. So yeah, it's, it's aligned the way that I want it to. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys how to go ahead and put the elbow and then the T. Okay, so I know that I'm gonna have this here. So I'm also just going to put this on. Like I said, it really is tough putting it in there. And on this one here, since it's not all the way already up and on, I like to try to get that as far in as I can. And you can just spin it. All right, so just put some on that. Okay, there. Okay, I'm up all the way flush right to there. So and all I'm going to do is cut that off about an inch more, all right? Because I just want that to connect and be as close as possible to here. So like I say, I'm gonna go about an inch right to there and that'll slide on and then they will be real close to each other. Like right there, okay. You can see right there, that's pretty close. A little bit of a gap, all right? So again, your utility knife, very important. Do not cut yourself, obviously. And you wanna have a nice sharp blade on there. Just work your way right on around. Okay, if there's any edges on that, then go ahead and just file them away. So now I'm ready to actually put this on backside there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, it's gonna be gross, I know, but I'm gonna put some spit on the inside of that. Remember, this is not your fresh water, okay? This is your gray water, so it's okay. Okay, so just go ahead and lube that up. And then it's gonna be tight. And just go ahead and just Push that on. Make sure you hold the back side here. Just like that. Look at there. It's on there really good. And that's what you want, okay? Yeah, right there. It's all the way flush. Nice. You can see just a little bit of space. Don't need much, okay? So now I got to go ahead and connect uh, this T to another T here and then space and then the T will shoot here and connect to here but it's going to shoot down and that's going to go to my floor. Alright so the only way to make sure that these lines are not leaking are to fill up this furthest basin here with water. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour water right in here. And then we're gonna go ahead and test the line. All right, so as you can see, I got my little, my little drain stopper right there. We'll see if that really does work. I don't know, okay. Okay, we'll put that there. The pan back down there, okay. So I'm just gonna let you see what's going on here, all right. So, this is it right here, okay. And you can test for leaks right here. This is where it's gonna leak, and obviously, in any of them right there. So, let's go ahead and release the drain valve. I'll feel around for it here. Here it is. I'm pulling it. Okay, that seemed to work pretty good. And it'll take a couple times, okay, just to see if there are going to be any leaks underneath here. And that's all the inspector typically is going to do. He's just gonna go like that and feel underneath to see if there's any type of water that's coming from there. Or it'll just pool up on wherever it leaks. Okay, so again, we'll take a look up here. And because of the pitch of the truck, okay, the pitch of the truck is like kind of like that, not really, but it is. 
there's gonna be some water in here so if, you know after the end of the day you're just gonna to have to take a little towel and just clean you know most of that water out on all of these basins okay okay under the truck is our gray water tank all right and that's 40 gallons it's got to be bigger than what your fresh water tank in and my port is already at the top three quarter inch line it's ready to go and that's the discharge so I just need to be able to drill a hole to the floor, but I want to make sure exactly where that's at because I don't want to drill through one of these little steel uh, support beams. Okay, so I know that I have one more drain line and it's coming from the fountain soda machine. Okay, and this is also a three quarter inch line and that's going to be uh, also uh, going underneath the truck, underneath the floor, and it's going to run over to the gray water tank. So I need to have a T that's gonna be underneath the truck that meets me over by the gray water tank. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and drill from the underside up. That way I don't drill down and then hit one of these here. Uh, I'm staying away from the wall and I know that the wall is approximately about four inches thick. So that puts me right about there and I'm gonna give myself about two inches away from the wall. Okay, so now that I got my whole drilled right there I'm gonna to go to the other side and drill down okay so I'm gonna to attempt to use a whole bit here and this is just a, a little bit bigger or almost the same size as that hose okay so I don't know if that's gonna go through that aluminum but it's worth uh, me using this right here breaking battery Okay, I got the big boy battery on there now. You gotta really hang on to this 20 uh, volt DeWalt because it'll break your wrist, I'm telling you. Okay, that's a nice snug fit right there and I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it that way. Okay, so my best option when it came from my train for the fountain soda machine is to run it down on a slight angle and I'll fasten it to the wood there and then keep going that way and then that goes over my wheel well and I'll just keep it like I said going down on a slight angle and then coming over to the front side of the wheel well and putting a hole just like I did on this side here uh, right there and then that will shoot Okay, so this is the elbow that runs in front of the tire wheel well from the fountain soda machine. All I did is just put the elbow, three quarter inch elbow, and I ran this line, uh, clear line, three quarter inch, and I put some zip ties inside of this little subframe here that holds the uh, aluminum box, and these are aluminum also. So let's go over to the other side. Okay, we're underneath the truck, and this is that line here that runs from the other side from the fountain soda machine and it comes into a T and this T runs the top of the gray water tank. And then this line here is the line that goes up to our sink basins and we're gonna go up there right now. But uh, as you can see, I got my, my zip ties here and you're gonna have to check them periodically because the weather is gonna crack these and they'll end up breaking off. Probably be suggested to use some type of metal tab to hold these up here. Okay, now this is where the line comes up through from the gray tank, gray water tank. And I'm just going to go ahead and fasten this to the sink basins, the T here, okay? You want to hold this really tight because you don't want to snap anything. That's about as good as I can get it right there. Okay. All right, so what we're gonna do is just go ahead and test this out really quick. So I'm gonna be really fast. So I'm just gonna look at the line and I'm gonna run underneath the truck and see that it's going inside the gray water tank. Okay, so here we go. Pull. Look at it, yep. There it goes, right in a gray water tank. And as you see, it is back filling here, but it really shouldn't go too much farther because of the, the, the decline, you know, of the truck is more towards, you know, 
in the gray water tank. Okay, so I went and changed the configuration just a little bit. I didn't have it directly just coming right from the floor up to this drain here. I put an elbow in it because I knew that I was going to put my hot water uh, tank here. So um, I just wanted to just make more room and having that run there would just been in the way. So I pushed it against the wall and I added a little two by four block back there. So I know somebody's going to post a question on there and say, hey, how is it that you can have all of these sink basins all hooked up to the same line and not have an air where it gets air intake? You know, like in your toilets, you know, when it gives that like blue, blue, blue up sound when you flush your toilet, you're not getting any air, okay, to help siphon that water out correctly. Well, what ends up happening is that this furthest one, which is here, your wash uh, basin, there should be no standing water in there. You should never end up plugging that. And that serves as your air intake to help siphon that water down uh, to your gray water tank. And also, uh, if you're saying to yourself, well, what prevents that water from going back up into the wash basin, you know, all that, that dirty water? Well, what happens is that, remember what I told you, there's that air gap in here where it goes down into this little bowl here, and that stops the water, prevents it from going back up. That's kind of like, like an air gap right there. And so these are very nice when it comes to that. And bam, just like that, everybody, that's how you hook up your drainage system to your sink basins, okay? Many, there are a lot of sink basins that are gonna be different, but they are pretty standard right there. So remember, the kit that you get online, uh, you can get the, the little um, the drain uh, bowls that I showed you. You can get those with the, the entire uh, drainage kit set up with the little plug. If you just look on eBay, um, it's like I said, I don't know what sinks you're using, so it's just going to vary, but the holes are pretty much the same and you can buy the whole thing. You can buy this whole uh, sink basin set up, four of them, you know, the hand wash and then the wash, uh, rinse, sanitize. You can buy all this in one and you can also get the, the faucets that come with it on this unit here. I'm going to be installing uh, two faucets, obviously one for the hand wash station and the other one for the uh, wash, rinse and sanitize. Uh, I hope you guys got something out of this video. Remember, I'm trying to do this on a budget. Uh, I'm not going with obviously the stainless steel and the whole get ups and all the works and stuff like that. What I am trying to do is save you guys money and show you the easiest way that you can build a food truck by being conservative with your money. Because let's face it, if you got a lot of money, you can get stainless steel and you can go this, that, and big sinks. And you know what? You shouldn't even be watching this video. I can't help you, really. You got enough money, why don't you just go buy a food truck that already has all these things in it. So if you're out there and you're trying to penny pinch and save a little bit of money and get approved by the food health food safety inspector, this is how it's gonna be done. They need them air gaps. They need to be able to see that you're not leaking anything. The gray water tank, fresh water tank, and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to hook up your faucets and how to set, set up your little pumps, okay? I'm gonna explain everything in the next video. Uh, these little battery operated uh, electric pumps, I'm telling you what, they, they're a lifesaver, okay? When you don't have electricity and you're out in the middle of nowhere or your generator dies, the one thing you're gonna always wanna have in order to run your food truck or your food trailer is water. That's right, you can't run it without water. If you don't have running water, then guess what? You're done, shut it down, you're over. Okay, so with that, let's get going, guys. I hope you got something out of this. Later. Oh, 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 that's right. <laughs>